<laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we should be coming on live very, very shortly. I'm just going to double check that we're on. Okay, we are on. We are on. It's a little laggy, but we should be able to get into it a bit shortly. In case, um, Anya, in case your Facebook mm -hmm. is switched on, you might just want to switch that off as well, yeah? Yeah, if I've, switch I've switched that off. Okay, cool. Well, um, I'm so excited to have you here today. I'll just do a quick introduction. My name is Hetal Joshi. I'm an organizational psychologist and as part of an ongoing initiative to support um, mental health with our community, we've just launched this Facebook group called Mental Health at Work. We want to really focus on two things, which is mental health, uh, the full spectrum of it, you know, the downs and the downs and all the way to the ups, and also how you can apply it at work. And today with me, we have Anya Chong. Um, I'm Hi. so excited to have you. I cannot believe how I chanced upon you and got in touch with you. And you said immediately yes, because this was a topic that you wanted to talk about. A little bit about mm -hmm. Anya. Anya is an ice queen. She is a skater and a three-time gold medalist at the Southeast Asian Games in 2017. She's also many other things, um, including um, an, a current entrepreneur. And she runs a, or she's founded a company called Alo Potentia, where a lot of our guests have read a little bit about Alo Potentia. And they're so excited because they said, um, I like to read one of the comments. Um, one of them said uh, she she thought it was quite important to have something like this. She said, oh, my God, I, I always used to complain about not having pockets in women's clothing, including traditional attires. Finally, someone is working on it. I tried suggesting to some clothing manufacturers a long time ago, but they just ignored it. Then I concluded that common sense is a scarce commodity. <laughs> That's quite hilarious. But with me is Anya. And Anya, let's start a little bit about who you are and um uh, the crazy uh, time that you've had in pursuit of becoming or an accidental or a in purpose gold medalist um so my name is Anne chong um and i'm 25. um i was a professional short track speed skater um for the malaysia national team um and i'm a four-time speed games gold medalist um and i founded my own company which as you mentioned was el potentia um, so that was very much founded on the ethos of trying to support women, to find a solution for women, like you said earlier, uh, you know, with having a solution of not having pockets in women's clothing, um, but also to be very sustainability focused. Um, I think those two things of, you know, support, what our potential actually means um, in Latin is you know to lift up and to support your potential, and so that's something I really believe a lot in. That's um, awesome. And yeah, ah, didn't didn't see that one. Didn't pay enough attention to that one. Um, so uh, Anya, uh, before before we even go ahead, um, I was actually told by um, someone that I know that you take your fan base so seriously that you almost reply to each and every one of them. So this person that I know is a parent and he was worried about his child being in the sporting industry uh, and about the mm -hmm. failures that she might be exposed to. And you were so kind enough and you actually replied and you said, don't worry about the failures, just keep focusing on what she wants. Um, yeah, so you, you actually spend as much time as possible replying to all the comments that you have, uh, that you've received on your Instagram page as well. I mean, for me, I think part of what was really great, um, you know, I have had an interesting, um, a tough experience into the sport, um, but I feel like, you know, I took away so many things and I learned so many things. Um, and I also feel like the tough experiences I had was for purpose. And I feel like if I can share that, if I can help somebody, and if, if it's even one person, for me, that's enough, you know? So whether it's, one child or you know someone's gone through the same experience um and i feel like what's so great um about my sport and that it's given me a platform is just being able to reach out to people to talk to people whether it's one-on-one -on -one or you know on a larger um basis um to yeah. just kind of connect with 
people um, and yeah, sort of help people and realize that they're not alone because, you know, that at the end of the day is what's so important. You know, I think love is the most important currency um, that we have. You're amazing. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did you land into um, skating and how did that transpire into a big time sport for you and you pursuing all the way to championship level? So it's really interesting because I started my journey in figure skating. Um, I sort of started because I was at a birthday party um, and I wasn't very good at it. Um, and all the other kids at the birthday party were so great and they're running around and you know, it bothered me that everyone else was so good and I wasn't. Um, and so, you know, mom came to me and she said, okay, um, during your, you know, December school holidays, you know, if you do well on your exams, you can get a certain set of lessons. Mm -hmm. um, then I sort of got the bug and I went to figure skating. Um, I kind of left figure skating because I felt like the focus had shifted from the sport and what I loved um, to a lot of, you know, politics and things like that. Um, and just detracted away from my experience. Yeah. Um, I moved into short track um, and what I did that all the way. So short track speed skating um, is basically, if you think of like a running track um, or a cycling track, it's similar to that, um, except you're on skates, um, mm -hmm. you're skating on the ice and you're on a really thin blade. Um, so it's very similar to maybe like car racing or something like that. Um, the differentiating factor being that you do, everybody drives or skates in the same lane. Um, mm -hmm. So you, do, you don't have individualized lanes and you're all competing for that one space. Um, and it's basically whoever crosses the line first. Um, wow. So there's a lot of tactics mm -hmm. involved. Um, it's obviously a lot of speed and a lot of adrenaline, um, which mm -hmm. I love. Um, yeah, so then I went to short track speed skating. I moved into that. Um, and then when I went to law school, I actually stopped um, took some time away, re-entered the sport, and within two weeks of my final law school exam, I was in Korea with no furniture, um, just kind of moving fully into being a full-time professional athlete. Right. Um, so I lived in Korea for two years. I competed at the SEA Games in KL. Um, and then I actually took a step back, uh, took a year and a half away, um, for personal reasons and to move into a career in the financial industry. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went back into skating again for the wow. recent SEA Games. Right, <laughs> so from, from skating to, the, to, to studying law, to skating again, to financial industry, mm -hmm. to skating again. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're very agile, obviously very agile. So tell us about what, what it takes to be um, a, a gold medalist. What does it take? So first um, and foremost, I think the most important thing is mindset. Um, I think what sets apart, you know, someone that's a gold medalist from even second or third is definitely the mindset. And mm -hmm. that was very, very present to me at the 2017 SEA Games in KL. Um, so well at the 2017 SEA Games in KL. Right. Okay. And, and, and so... You know, that experience was really tough for me. Um, there was a lot of emotional abuse. There was a lot of politics, um, threats. People were just trying to do a lot of funny business. Um, I'd obviously given up a few years of my life, moved to a foreign country where I couldn't speak the language. Um, and I was away from my family and friends, obviously to pursue the sport um, mm -hmm. and to give it my all. So to have people sort of try to come in the way of that, come between that um, was really tough. Um, and so I remember had a really tough experience the night before um, with my coach where he was, you know, screaming at me, throwing things at me, um, just a lot of emotional abuse. And it was tough for me because it was my inner circle. It was the people that, you know, I really trusted and depended on. Um, and so I remember moving into the morning of the sea games. I remember thinking, you know, I was so overwhelmed. Um, you know, my emotions were all over the place. And I distinctly remember thinking to myself, okay, I have two choices. I either let my emotions rule me. Um, I am upset. I stay angry. I stay mad. But then if I think about it, you know, who really wins in this situation? If I give my power away to somebody else 
and I stay angry, I stay mad, I stay resentful, all it really will affect is myself and my outcome in this competition. And so I decided to put that aside um, and, you know, focus on what I needed to focus on. And, you know, because of a lot of the politics and a lot of all the negativity that kind of was surrounding me at that time, um, in my mind, I thought, you know, I have only one option here, and that was to win gold. Because I wanted to prove to everybody that no matter what they were trying to do, they couldn't bring me down. Regardless of all, you know, the funny business and the meddling and, you know, the negativity they were trying to do, I wouldn't let that kind of behavior, you know, prevail. Um, so going in, to be honest, I probably was not at my physical best. Um, because of a lot of things that were happening, I actually ended up being off the ice for the 10 days, you know, prior leading up to the competition, which is insane for any athlete um, that knows, you know, if you're going into your biggest match to not be training in your sport um, is just, you know, absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, and so I was not my physical best, but I remember in my head thinking, you know, this is it and there's no other option. And not having that extra option just meant that in my mind, it was already done. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, when it actually happened, it was super emotional, um, mm -hmm. just because of all the bigger surrounding things that were happening at the time. Um, but yeah, I think definitely the most important thing is mindset. And if you have the right mindset, that leads to everything else. It gives you a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. It also means that I think you will overcome a lot of the obstacles that you face. Um, and at the end of the day, hard work is so important. Habits are so imp important. Time is so important. Just putting in the time day in, day out and putting in the work. Mm -hmm. But I think the differentiating factor is always your mindset. Right. And when you, when you talked about the emotional abuse, uh, actually, when you were sharing that before we got on um, live, I was actually really shocked. Um, is that normal that um, athletes go through that much of emotional abuse? Was that normal for you? Did you feel like it was a normal thing that should happen? I mean, I think I was put in a very unique position because I was training in Korea. And I do think that um, it is more it is more prevalent in that culture, unfortunately. I think we're moving away from that. Um, but it's not, I think, necessarily common sport wide, but it is mm -hmm. something that does happen often. And it is something you hear about often. Are um, you and comfortable? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, no, 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 carry on. Are you comfortable sharing what, the, what was the worst thing that was done to you? I mean, I think definitely for the SEA Games, just because that was a really jarring experience, it was important to me. Um, and just, you know, having someone trap you and feel like you physically couldn't get out. I was very lucky where I was never physically abused, uh, even though I knew that that was something that went on. Um, and so it was just, you know, throwing things in my vicinity, being angry or saying certain things. And I think the words actually were the things that hurt me the most. Um, I'm a kind of person where I pride myself very much on my loyalty, my honesty, um, and those certain traits and knowing that and having that manipulated used against you that was really tough for me um right. because it really questioned who i was as a person you know for me i was like you know i give everything my all i'm here i've dedicated everything to be here um and i pride myself in being very hard working and very um loyal and honest about what i do um right. so that was very tough for me. Witnessing, you know, other people being physically abused was really tough for me because, you know, I have gone through, you know, being like sexually assaulted. And so being in an environment where I witnessed something that I was so against was really difficult for me morally as well. And so, you know, it took me a lot of time to kind of come to terms with that and figure out what I wanted to do, how I wanted to operate. Um, but at the end of the day, when I stepped back, I thought about it and I was like, okay, you know, I think there are two, two very important factors. Um, first of all, I made a promise to myself that I would do whatever it took. And I believed, and I still believe that that was the best coach 
in the world and the best coach for me then. And I wanted to give myself every chance to succeed. And of mm -hmm. course, success never comes at the price of you know your morality and what you think is right. Mm -hmm. um, but I also thought that, you know, I think that everything that happened in my life happened for a reason. And I, and I really genuinely believe that. And I have no regrets or hate or ill will anymore. <laughs> um, and I think I was put in that position, A, to learn, um, so that I could also share my story and help others, but also yeah. because I hope that in some way I was put in that position maybe to help him to understand, to teach him, hopefully um, to change him in some way so that he would move forward with a different perspective and hopefully um, treat people a little bit differently. And I, and I hope that I've made some kind of difference. Right. I am actually just flabbergasted at the fact that you said I was lucky that I was not physically abused. To think that being lucky means not being abused uh, is kind of shocking. It should be, it, it should be the way life is. <laughs> we shouldn't be feeling that we're lucky that we didn't get abused, if you get what I'm trying to say. But you would have been in such a circumstance that you would have felt that, thank God I didn't get physically abused that the standards are so low with regards to humanity. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. Um, but at the same time, I think circling back, like I really don't feel, you know, upset or anger. I, I know a lot of pe me close to me, you know, um, felt very yeah. bad. They felt um, yeah. like they wish they'd be, been able to protect me. They were very sad. Um, and, and they obviously wish that that hadn't happened to me. And I can genuinely say that I don't feel that way. Um, right. I think all your experiences, yeah. good or bad, mold you into yeah. the kind of person that you are. That's and awesome. whatever comes into your life comes for a specific reason. Right. So those reasons have made me really passionate about what I am and passionate about helping other people. Yeah. And if that came at the cost of a difficult cir circumstance for me and that can help you know, another person, then to me that really was worth it. Um, yeah. And look who you... Look what you, you look what you achieved, and look who you've you become. You know, also, well, yeah. And what what and else? Also, if you don't go through the tough times, you can't build your mindset up. You know, you yeah. you know, it's very much. I, I love to use the analogy of like weight training. You know, why do you weight train? Because and what actually happens when you weight train? So when you train weights, what you're literally doing is you're tearing the muscle so that they can regrow back stronger. That's, that's how you build muscle and get stronger, right? And we understand that concept in the gym, um, but people don't really understand it so much when you parallel it across to your life. Yeah. And for me, you know, the only way that you can grow, improve, and get better is, you know, to tear those muscles and get stronger. Mm -hmm. So instead of seeing these tough things in your life as, oh my gosh, I wish these bad things hadn't happened. If only these things had happened. Actually, as long as you've learned and grown from every experience, then, you know, it was worthwhile and it was a good experience to have. Yeah. Well, so many of them are saying hello. Hi, Anya Chong. Hi, Anya. Uh, so there are definitely people tuning in and listening to you. And I, I just absolutely love what you said earlier. Well, you can't build a great mindset. And that's one thing that I've never gotten clarity when leaders say, you have to have a, a great mindset. You can't. You have to have a great mindset. Mm -hmm. But a great mindset is not a great mindset. It is the outcome of something. Uh, it is an outcome of a process. Uh, it is not a thing on its own. It's a process that is uh, required from a struggle into a new movement and a new narrative. And only then you get the great mindset. Um, and I love the analogy as well. So well done with that one. Um, what was life like after um, having left the sporting world um, and moving into the next part of your life? I mean, so moving on from the 2017 games was really tough. Um, I remember a resounding thought that I had um, was it wasn't worth it. And Sorry? not to say that it wasn't worth it, um, not to say that I wasn't grateful. Um, I was so grateful and I was so honored um, to get those gold medals, 100%. Yes. And, you know, that is such a blessing because we can never take these things for granted. Yes. Um, but I had given up so much and I'd gone through so much pain um, that to me it felt like, okay, now now what? You know, and I think it took me a, a lot of time to step back 
Um, moving on from the SEA Games, I struggled a lot with depression. I struggled a lot with anxiety. You know, I was having panic attacks, you know, every day. Um, but I think it was good because it really gave me time to focus on my mental health. So many people come up to me now and they're like, you're so self-aware or, you know, you have such a, such a strong or positive mindset. That didn't come from nothing, you know, because I hit my lowest point. I had to say, okay, I really need to put in the effort now to work on myself, to work on my mental health and, you know, my mindset. Yeah. And when you hit rock bottom, the great thing it does is that it really gives you time to build a good foundation. Um, so I went through so much like soul searching. Um, I learned a lot of tools, which I think are so important, you know, so like meditation, I do med I meditate a lot because that helps to calm my mind. You know, I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of you know, great motivational speakers. Um, I practice gratitude every morning. And I think that is something that has been so crucial. I think a lot of times, especially in the time now with, you know, everything happening with COVID-19, everyone being stuck at home, it's so easy to focus on what we don't have. Mm. And, you know, to have all these emotions stirring around, whether it being anger, upset, hurt, whatever it is. And those are completely valid. And you should never feel like, oh, well, you know, there's a starving kid in Africa, and so I should feel bad because I'm here. Completely yeah. not. You know, process and go through those emotions because it's so hard to have those, those feelings, whatever they are. But then take a step back, hone those in, and then be grateful for what you do have. So what I like to do is, you know, every morning and every night, I like to think of, you know, three things that I'm grateful for. And it could be anything. And you could start off and you could be like, I'm not grateful for anything and life sucks and all these bad things are happening. And it could be something really small. It could be like today, I'm really grateful because the sun is shining. And, you know, you don't even really have to mean it at that point in time. You could think, I'm really grateful, you know, that the sky is blue outside, but I'll just pretend. And yeah. if that's the case, that's okay. Because as you go through the days, even just pretending to be grateful, already takes you one step closer and it yeah. builds this habit and yeah. the great thing about gratitude is that when you're grateful you can't feel any other negative emotion if yeah. you are genuinely grateful you can't feel angry you can't feel mad you can't feel hate you can't feel sad in that yeah. moment you just feel grateful and Absolutely. right now i think that's so important for us to practice because you know just to be grateful that you know we are inside that we have a home that we have loved ones to call and FaceTime, that we have the internet. So we have access to so many things. Um, I think that's really important at the moment. Yeah, and I love what you say. When you're in the space of gratitude, it's very hard to feel anything negative at all. I you know, often tell my niece, you know, when she's crying, I'll just say, you know, hey, uh, you continue crying, but skip and cry. And then when she starts skipping, it's impossible to cry mm -hmm. anymore. There's nothing, mm -hmm. there's nothing bad in the world anymore. She's just laughing. Um, mm -hmm. So it is impossible to be in a negative space when you have put yourself in a specifically constructive state. So it's very mm -hmm. hard. It's really, really hard to, to, to feel negative when you have consciously put yourself there. Um, it, we have one of our viewers asking a question. Did you ever get a life coach to get you to where you are today? So you were talking about having anxiety, having panic attacks mm -hmm. after. I mean, I could only imagine that you would have it before or during uh, but it's interesting that you had it after. Before we get into the life coach um, and whether you had one, I'd like to ask, why did you have it after? What was it? What, what is it? Is it the, you know, the decrease of adrenaline? Is it because you had accumulated so much? Why did you have it after? I mean, several things. I think, you know, it was really hard because at that time, I went through, I think, a really unusual circumstance where there was a lot of negativity. I know a lot of people around me also moving on from the SEA Games also, you know, felt like it was a lot. I needed a break um, and a holiday from everything that had gone on. I also think that, especially for me, but I know for other people as well, um, when I'm going through something, you know, I can really go into, you know, you know what they call like this, like hero savior mode. So you put on your armor and you're like, okay, I'm ready for battle. Hit me, you know, yeah. and, and then you can really go into this mindset where like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to attack whatever situation it is. Mm. And then after that, because you haven't processed your emotions, that's when you struggle. 
So that was very much the case for me. You know, I spent that time being strong, being resilient because I had to be, and because that was what I needed to do at that time. And then I had to go through and process my emotions. And I think, you know, for whatever it is that you're struggling with in life, I think that happens to a lot of people. Um, yeah. you go through whatever it is, a breakup, career, you know, whatever it is that's really tough. And then afterwards, you know, they go through all these emotions and they're like, why am I upset now? And it could even be delayed. Mm. And they go through and they think, you know, why am I upset, you know, six months, a year down the line? Um, and and pe different people grieve and go through things in different ways and that's okay. Um, and I remember even from myself going through it, a lot of people understood at the time, even very early on post the C game. And after a while they were like, okay, that's enough. You know, yeah. it, it's been you know, such a long period of time. Like you need to snap out of it. And that's yeah. not how your body processes things. No, that's you know, not I mean, from years, like even your childhood, you can have things that had happened in your childhood still affect you because your body remembers, you know, Obviously, yes. and your body remembers everything that happens to you. So unless you properly process them, deal with them, go through them, you know, it will always be something that even if it's in your subconscious, even if it's, you know, really tiny amount, it will have an impact on you and how you move forward. And so you, you can choose to either do that in a positive way yeah. you know, or a negative way. You're very conscious. You're obviously very well read, a lot of wisdom as well. How did you get there? Did you get a life coach apart from, you know, podcasts and mm -hmm. um, reading and, um, you know, reflecting and processing? Mm -hmm. Uh, did you also get any professional help or support? I mean, so I think for me, you know, I, I talk from this place now, but it's been many, many years of work um, and, how, and many, many years. I'm curious to know the duration because I think this is what people don't really realize that they think, and a lot of times you're like, oh, just step out of it, just get out of it, just move on. Blah, blah. Well, I'm always curious to know what is the time? So how long do you think you took to recover, uh, assuming that you still... I'm not sure, forever recovering, I think. Uh, I mean, I think it took, it took many years, but I also think that if I'm being really honest, it started long before that, in the sense that, you know, for me, I think growing up, I probably didn't have the greatest mindset. You know, I think on some level, I definitely struggled with, you know, mental health anyways. Um, and so it's, it's been a long time. What do you mean by you know, that? I think what I've really gotten, um, I think for me, um, I was very much an empath and I feel things very deeply. And so, you know, growing up, even from a teenager, I think I really struggled. I struggled a lot with pressure, um, wanting to be perfect. You know, I struggled with, you know, you know, being depressed. Um, and so I struggled with that, you know, from a very young age. And, and, and how so old it, you were when you started feeling those things, and did you know that you were feeling those things? Um, I think maybe like 14, 15 years old. Um, mm -hmm. And then I moved to this period where um, I got a little bit better, and it was one step forward, two steps backwards, that kind of thing. Right. Um, when I got a little bit older, I struggled a little bit with self harm. And mm -hmm. so I think everything sort of just escalated. Um, and then I actually had a incident where um, I had a sex sexual assault case um, and I was raped um, and that really made me hit rock bottom and you know there was a, a thought process where I was like you know this is it I, I don't want to be here anymore and you know that thought made me think okay so if I decide that I really want to be here I really have to be purposeful I really want to build myself up in a good way. I really want to, you know, learn how I'm going to rebuild myself and really do it from the ground up. And so it's been a constant struggle. And, you know, there'll be, you know, years where I get better and I think, okay, look, you know, I've put in so much work and I'm my best self. And then something will happen to bring me back, you know, like the Sea Games. And I'll think, you know, this is really frustrating because I've put in so much work day in and day out. And now I feel like I've sacrificed it at the expense of something like my mental health, which is the most important thing to me, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that is what is the most important. Um, so, you know, was that worth it or not? But I think, you know, every single time, yes, it feels like there's a setback, but you're always improving, you're learning more, mm -hmm. and you're having more resources and more tools. Yeah. And so 
I think I'm finally at the place where, you know, I'm really comfortable with, you know, myself and where I am and my mindset and also understanding that like, you know, there may be times where I'm upset or I'm, you know, sad or frustrated and, you know, that's okay. And just accepting that because emotions are part of being human and it's what's great about being human. But, you know, really also understanding that like, it's not a, you know, a quick fix process. And yeah. it's not going to be, you know, uh, you know, one solution, the miracle that overcomes everything. It will yeah. take time. You will have setbacks. You will go backwards. But that's actually a good thing because it's bringing you forward and making you stronger each time. And, yeah. you know, I'm at my strongest now um, because of every single situation that's happened and every single setback, which has made me have to work on it even more and become even stronger. And a lot of times I'll forget my tools. And, you know, I'll forget to be grateful and I won't do it for a month and I'll think, and then all of a sudden I'll realize and I'll be like, oh, okay, it's because I've forgotten, you know, all these tools that I have. And I think it's also understanding that, you know, in order to be in that place where you have a strong mindset, you have to be constantly working. You have to be, you know, working on it every day. It's not something where, you know, you come up with a solution and for the rest of your life, you're forever going to be this person. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I just, I, I'm just so impressed that you are so articulate about everything and you're so open and vulnerable about sharing such, um, you know, events that people shy away from and people, uh, you know, definitely don't want to talk about it in public at the very least. So I can only, you know, thank you so much for being so open about it. How do you feel as you are talking about these things in public? I mean, it's it's always hard for me. I remember the first time in particular was really difficult. Um, and it's been, you know, moving forward to also understanding and accepting it myself. You know, and, and it is hard. And every time I talk about it, you know, it, it does still make me nervous. It does still give me a reaction. Um, I'm only human. Um, and like I said, it's, you know, it's, it is a process, but you know, the more I talk about it, the more comfortable I've become with it, the more accepting I am of it, of myself. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think the overarching importance for me is that, you know, to share it, to normalize it, to yeah. help someone understand that, you know, I think a lot of times what's really difficult is that you feel very alone. You feel like yes. I'm going through all these things you know, I'm not dealing with it well, or I'm dealing with failure, I'm dealing with setbacks, or I'm feeling a certain way, and no one else feels that way at all. And of course, that's not true. Um, yeah. But we always feel it. We always think I'm yeah. the only person who's struggling at in this. In the world, in um, the world. Exactly. The world. Yeah. <laughs> and so if we can just talk about it more, share, because you know, nobody's perfect. And yeah. nobody has had a smooth ride. And everybody struggles with things, you know, whether it's good or bad. Um, and the more we share and we're just open um, and we connect with people, I think that just helps people to feel better and Absolutely. helps people to progress in their journey as well. And it's people like you who make it easy to break through these invisible uh, barriers that exist uh, with regards to people wanting to talk about it and therefore inherently connecting and through connecting you heal too because you hear other stories mm -hmm. and when you hear other stories you feel normalized and Feeling normal is a huge part mm -hmm. of uh, the recovery. Feeling normal and you know normalized and feeling like you're not alone is a huge part of the recovery. Huge, mm -hmm. massive. So unless we, I'm not saying that we have to talk about it publicly. Of course, it helps because it helps mm -hmm. raise awareness. But until people don't talk about it to somebody, uh, to the right people, then we're never really going to be able to break this. So, um, quick one. I didn't um, want to. I, I, I don't want to. Back to the yeah. question that someone asked. Um, I haven't had one specifically. Um, yes. I've had, you know, a little bit of people in my life um, that have been able to advise me and give me lots of wisdom. But honestly, a lot of it I've just got online. And I think a lot of times people think, you know, you know that, you know that they need a certain life coach or something, and those are so great and so important and so valuable. But to a lot of people out there, they don't have the access. And yeah. you know, to understand that just because you don't have that access doesn't mean that you can't build your tools and, you know, grow stronger and understand um, how to deal with things. There's so many resources online. There's so many podcasts, you know, there's so many great people. Um, you know, I, I, I love Tony Robbins. He's a great, you know, mindset, but there's so many, 
you know, books out there that you can read, I podcasts that you can listen to. And that's really what, you know, I, I started with, you know, so even with yeah. meditation, I know there are a lot of great apps out there. Um, and honestly, I just started with Spotify. You know, there's a playlist on Spotify that says guided meditation and that's free. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I still use to this day. Yeah. Um, so, you know, while I think, you know, um, professionals are so important and they're so great and they're so important, um, there are a lot of free resources out there that you can tap into that are available. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. I mean, there was a time where there were no psychologists. <laughs> there were no psychologists. And people just used wisdom to be able to understand themselves and to be able to like, you know, connect with themselves again. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of times uh, depression, anxiety, stress comes from losing connection with yourself. Um, and it is time out. It's almost like caterpillar to butterfly. You're in a cocoon. It, you know, that one thing that is most valuable is to find a way to reconnect with yourself. And that can be through reading, through uh, listening to music, through listening to podcasts, so on and so forth. I've got a couple of questions as well. I might, I'm cognizant that we have to speak about your business as well, but we have quite a few questions coming in too. I hope you don't mind, Anya. Uh, so we have a question about what do you recommend that the education system must have with regards to mental health? That's a great question. I think it is just incredibly insane that children are not taught about the most important thing for the rest of their life, which is their, their, their mindset. Um, so what do you I think? I completely agree. I think it's so necessary. I think, um, you know, ed the education system is a great thing and it teaches you so many great and valuable lessons. But one thing it doesn't teach you is a lot of life lessons. Yeah, um, and absolutely. one thing I think it is really great about sport, to be honest, is that it really catalyzed a lot of my life lessons. It helped me deal a lot with, you know, failure, success, hard work, um, rejection and disappointment. Um, right. But I do think that something that is really important, um, and it's something that you know I think is so easy to add, and you don't yeah. need a, a syllabus or you know a full course. It's just something that teachers can add on. Is you know teaching their kids how to be grateful. And that's such a small thing that I think makes such a big difference in people's lives. It's something that you can implement yourself or to your children. Um, you know, really just sitting down, but also teaching children you know, how to deal with failure. Because that's something that I think, especially in Asian society is, you know, we all want to succeed. We're so hard on ourselves. We wanna, we're all perfectionists. You know, we wanna strive for excellence and that's fantastic. Um, but to understand how to deal with that. And yeah. to also understand that in order to succeed, you need to fail, you know? In order to figure out what is the right thing to do, you need to first figure out all the wrong things to do. Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of, you know, like, you know, meditation and little things like this, little tools you can give, you know, our children and our kids, um, you know, that don't require, you know, big thing or big resources or big money. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you know, what you said that is really remarkable is that it can be something as simple as just teaching kids how to be grateful. It doesn't have to be part of a curriculum because this is about life. So I think that's incredible because, you know, uh, scientifically, if you're training someone to be uh, grateful, you're actually already activating the most important part of the brain that is required for resilience, that is required for resilience and more than resilience, just contentment and happiness as well. So a um, couple more questions. Who is the one person that you talk to on a daily basis with regards to your insecurities? So who is your go-to person? Um, I think obviously like my boyfriend and my best friends and I'm really lucky to have an incredible support system. My family and my friends um, are just the people that I rely on a lot. Yeah. Um, but I would say that I talk to people on a daily basis necessarily about my insecurities because you know, with all the work that I've done, I've gotten to a place where you know, I've really learned to accept who I am. And that's not to say you know, that I think I'm perfect by no means. And there's so many things I struggle with um, you know, especially like, you know, now that I'm moving into, you know, a different space in a different industry, um, you know, dealing a lot with that imposter syndrome at the moment and, you know, yeah. feeling like, you know, maybe I don't have the right credentials or I'm, you know, not the smartest person out there and, you know, how to deal with that, how to deal with new and different challenges has yeah. also been really interesting. Um, but, you know, I don't 
talk to someone on a daily basis about my insecurities because I don't let my insecurities, you know, dictate my life anymore. It's not okay. something I think about on a daily basis, yeah. you know. And I like to think of the positives instead. So I like to think of my affirmations. So every morning uh, I start with my affirmations and, you know, I start with, and it could just be something really simple. I am whatever it is. Um, and I think it just helps to build this up because it is really important to, you know, have constructive criticism both to, you know, on yourself, understand where you can improve and grow, even yeah. just refocus the questions. So be like, you know, instead of being like, I didn't do this today. Be like, okay, what could I have done better? Maybe I could have done this instead of something else. Right. Um, yeah. The way you perceive and um, frame things makes such a big difference. Well said. Yeah, absolutely. You in the right frame. You have set yourself up to stay in that frame, and you constantly mm -hmm. use the right language to make sure that that frame uh, sticks super long in that particular space and not going to go back to uh, the old ways of being as well. One of our, our viewers is asking a, a, the question that is going to take us to the final part of it. Uh, from ice queen to a clothing line, and why not training kids about ice, ice skating instead? Um, so Alpo Tench is a, a, a lifestyle brand. At the moment, we're focusing on these cross-body um, iPhone cases. So basically what it is, is that it has a strap. So it's similar to this, and I take it off at the moment because, you know, we're all on... Um, self-isolation, MCO, so we're not outside. Um, but, you know, it, it's great because it has a detachable strap. So yeah. for me, I was thinking even a lot of clothes that didn't have pockets, um, when I put my phone in, they were too heavy. Um, and I'm someone who's on my phone all the time. Um, yeah. So I was just holding the phone in my hand. Um, and so that's why it's so important to me, A, to create a product that was sustainable, um, so it's created from vegan leather, um, and it's got, you know, a place to put your cards um, and a wallet phone case, but also to be detachable and That's just okay. a nice, to buy one. nice, you know, that protects your phone um, right. and also protects your um, contactless card. So it also has RFID in it. Right. Um, and it was just a product that I wanted myself. Um, and then I thought, well, there's no other product like this out there that has all these offerings. And, you know, so many people had talked to me about it and they said, you know, this is a really interesting product and something that I would really like. I think there's really a need for this. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, we're not just one person. I'm not just a skater and an athlete. I'm also, you know, a daughter and a friend. And, you know, I'm, you know, also so many other things. And you know, entrepreneurship Someone is vegan as well. Thank you, friend. Someone said vegan too. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, you know, I don't think that we should ever pigeonhole ourselves into just one thing. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to be multifaceted. You know, I want to be a hyphenate, not just an athlete, but an athlete entrepreneur, and hopefully many other things um, as I grow and discover myself. Um, but I've loved this because it's been a, such a different challenge. You know, right. you know, I understand the skating world and I understand the sporting world, and I want to continue to grow do things that I don't understand that are difficult um, and just to learn as much as I can. Right. Um, and yeah, moving on to what that person said, yeah, it's vegan. Um, it was really important for me to build a brand that was sustainable and, you know, as sustainable as I can be. I think a lot of times people don't do something because they're, they feel like they can't be hundred percent. And right. obviously we're, that brand and we're not there yet um, but we do as much as we can and I think that's so important um, right. and you know vegan leather I think is something that's so important because it reduces the impact versus you know animal leather by 24 times and that's mm. massive you know the amount of um, greenhouse gases and emissions that are in our atmosphere at the moment you know are creating such a big impact not just to you know ourselves but you know the future generations that are coming I, I agree. I think, you know, how can you have great mental health when you're disturbing the mental health of um, another animal or another human? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, also from an animal health perspective, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, for the, you know, in the, for that industry, you know, it creates so much, you know, impact that, you know, you don't even see, you know, Absolutely. so from animal leathers that creates, you know, Eight, 20, almost 20% of all the greenhouse gases emitted. And that's not even, 
you know, you know, all the cars and all the other pollution that we're going around. So I think yeah. this is really important. Um, and also for me, like, you know, reducing plastic, having sustainable packaging, um, and just having a transparency to my customers. I think the customer at the moment is becoming more and more informed about what they want. Um, there's obviously access to the internet. So, you know, there's so much access to knowledge out there, you know, that I really think that, you know, just being honest with the customer. So, you know, I'm very transparent about where we're at. We're not perfect. There are a lot of things that we're trying to improve, to streamline, to become more sustainable. But for me, it's just so important to do my part. And I right. think, you know, doing a little bit is okay. You don't need to do the full haul straight away. Yeah. And, and what would you say is a skill that uh, permeates across uh, all the things that you've done from, you know, being a, a legal student to being a skater, to being in the financial industry, uh, to being a, a gold medalist, to uh, running your own business? What is one thing that cuts across everything in terms of a skill? What is the most important I mean, skill? There are definitely two things. Um, first of all, I think being adaptable and flexible. That was something I learned a lot in my support because obviously I'm competing directly against someone. Yeah. So I have to learn how to react to things and situations. And that is so important because, you know, no journey is ever smooth sailing, ever. Yeah. And, you know, you always have to deal with things that come up that, you know, in my process of building my business, everything that could go wrong went wrong several times over and I thought, you know, okay, this situation with say the manufacturer has gone wrong and I've dealt with that situation now I can move on. A different situation will pop up and the same issue and problem could keep coming up again. And right. it's learning also to be resilient to that and to the process. And right. most importantly is just being patient. I think that, that is something that I definitely struggle with. I'm a sprinter <laughs> by nature. So I can sprint through life. Um, yeah. but things just take time, you right. know, with the sport or with business, you know, nothing happens overnight. There are no overnight successes. It may yeah. seem like people are overnight successes to you because you're on the outside of me, but to them, I can promise you that it wasn't. Yeah. Um, and you know, so with the sport that took time, it took many, many years to get to where I went to and it took patience and understanding. You know, I feel like I'm putting in all this hard work and I'm not getting, you know, the fruits of my labor back yet. And when is it going to come? And so often I think people quit right before their success. You yeah. know, the hardest obstacle usually comes before the biggest breakthrough. And and that was definitely exactly what you experienced the day before uh, you won the gold medal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That period of time to just give up. And to just say, you know, and and it would have been okay because, you know, I know there's so many other people in that situation that would have. Um, and if I had given up at that stage, I would have never gotten to, you know, yeah. my, my success. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, just, you know, I think when you think that you're at your breaking point, you can always give a little bit more. Right. And if you hold out past a little bit past your breaking point, I think on the other side of that really will be the success or, you know, what you're looking for. I love that if you just hold past a little bit beyond the breaking point. I love that. And I also love a couple of things that I like to share um, as, as key summaries. You know, I think a lot of us, a lot of, a lot of companies that I work with, uh, we would have employees who talk about politics, who talk about leaders who aren't leaders and uh, just being in a toxic kind of culture. And I think what you've done is that you've just said, I will leave when I am a winner. Mm -hmm. I will leave when I'm a winner. And I will have that memory uh, that I left. And when I left, I was a winner. Um, I didn't leave because of a person. I didn't leave because of a circumstance. I left because my job was done and it was done super well. And I think that's the best thing that one can actually really do. I mean, depending on how much you can tolerate. Of course, if it's abuse and stuff like that, walk the hell out of it immediately. But I think a lot of us can and should, you know, focus on what does this mean for me and what do I want to prove for myself? It cannot be about somebody else when you're in a toxic, political, abusive kind of an environment. Um, and you did brilliantly. I mean, you're the pinnacle of someone who would have gone through abuse, stayed 
and did your thing, won, won your gold medal. Um, and I think the other part then that you brought in was, was it worth it? And you didn't quite answer the question. So I'd like you to maybe just answer that question. Was it all worth it? I let, you know, circling back to what I said before, yes. Um, just because I think every experience, as long as you gain something from it, it's yeah. worth it. You know, yeah. As long as I grow and get better, then for me, that was worth it. And yeah. I think the things that have been able to, the people that have been able to reach out because of that, um, has been more than worth it for me yeah. you know the overarching you know purpose behind everything was that i wanted to be able to help others and yeah. you know I think it was really great to be able to have this sense of purpose because when the chips were down and things were really hard you know i could come back and say okay yes life is tough right now i know you want to quit i know things are really hard but why are you doing this you yeah. know and for me, I was doing it for something that was beyond myself. And I think that really helps me have that sense of purpose. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think purpose is so important. You know, circling back to abuse, like you said, you know, if you are ever in a situation, you know, 100%, like, you know, I hope you have the strength to leave. And I hope, you know, you will, I know that's not an easy process, but, you know, building, you know, yourself up so that you eventually have the strength to leave. You know, I know it's very easy to say, you know, just leave that situation. Um, it's easier said than done. And I know it's not an overnight thing to be able to just step up and walk away. Um, but to also understand the purpose behind everything. You Absolutely. know, if there is a reason for it, you know, why? Why are you doing the things that you're doing? And really just understanding and, you know, giving everything that you do in life a why. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Anya. We've hit like way 20, 20 minutes past, uh, but we've had a lot of interesting comments and questions. And um, I just wanted to, to, to conclude with, um, I, think, I think, you know, what you role model is someone who has um, in very difficult times figured out a way to set yourself up for success regardless. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that I think a lot of us can benefit from. Uh, I think the idea, uh, the idea about everything now is just you know, don't leave circumstances, don't walk away, just figure out how you're going to set yourself up for success, no matter what it is. Uh, but at least when you leave, uh, you feel that you did everything that you wanted to and that you could. Um, so with that, you've got your last uh, comment over here. You rock, Anya. <laughs> you, you really do. Um, and someone saying proud of you. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Very, very proud of you. Um, we will definitely check in again. I'm definitely going to call you and have a quick chat on some other things after this. Uh, together with me, I've got, well, I'm Hetal Doshi, I'm an organizational psychologist. We're really supporting the community with uh, content and interviews with professionals like yourself. Um, with me is Anya Chong from Alo Potentia. Uh, this is a story about how the Ice Queen became a three time gold medalist at the Southeast Asian Games and also went on to start up her own clothing line um, and with other products as well, and all focused on sustainability. So thank you so much, Anya. Um, and and before I go, I just want to say one thing, that um, if anyone has um, either any questions or anything at all, if they want to reach out, or if they're even just struggling through this you know, MC at the moment, they just want someone to talk to and connect with, um, please reach out to me. Um, you can either get me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I'm just at my name, Anya Chong. Um, and yeah, definitely check out El Potentia. I'm trying to put out a lot of resources for people um, during this time when we're all at home to have a positive mindset because that's something I really believe in. Um, and just to share and connect with people as much as possible through this time. So if that's something you're interested in, um, please follow um, our Instagram also, which is just at and then Allo Potentia. Um, yeah. And yeah, of course, check out our product online, um, which is also just www.allopotentia.com. Um, and yeah, just reach out. Um, that's, you know, why we're here. And connection is so important in this period of time. Yeah, absolutely. And Anya responds really quickly as well, surprisingly super quickly. And from what I've heard, almost everyone it gets a response as well. So please do uh, take up this opportunity and have a chat. For those of you who say there's no one to talk to, there is someone to talk to for sure. 
Uh, so please do reach out, Anya. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate the conversation. You've been magic. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, just sending a lot of you know love and light out there to everyone. Thank you. See you. Take care. Good luck with everything. I'll connect with you again. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.